we won't reach out to a God that we don't think we have a need for. And so what we've got is we are now toggling back and forth between the extremes. On the one side, we're isolated all by ourselves. And then on the other end, we are in a room with a megaphone where we can literally talk to millions of people at a time. And toggling back and forth between isolation on one hand, mass and social media on the other hand, and ignoring community is a very unhealthy place to be. A couple that we knew were in separate rooms in their own house having a marriage fight on their Facebook pages. I mean, that's an extreme, but nobody's listening to that and going, oh, that would never happen. I'm not anti-social media. I, I use it all the time and I'm grateful for it. And then we had this amazing conversation around the table with teenagers who intentionally abandoned their phones. You know what we're about to do? We're about to get real. We're about to have conversations that Christians have behind closed doors, the scary ones, the ones that make you feel uncomfortable. That's where we're going. Why? Because we're family. Ustedes son mi familia. So this is the Brian and Janelle podcast. She's Janelle, and I'm Brian. If you don't want to miss anything, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button to get a notification whenever we drop a new episode. This is the Brian and Janelle podcast. And we're so pleased to have with us Pastor Carl Vaders, who is author of four books about small churches. He produces resources for helping small churches thrive. Okay, so Pastor Vaders, welcome back to the show. Well, it's good to be back with you. Awesome. Hey, thanks for getting up early again. I know in California, it's like yesterday or something. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, or tomorrow or three, day, three <laughs> days from now or something. Um, you, you've been working on an article r- right now, and you're just about to release it, but it's it's ultimately making some observations about seeing people spending too much time in two extremes. So what's the first extreme? Well, the first extreme is something that we've been doing a lot recently in the last few years and now has been put into hyperdrive by the pandemic. And that is we're spending a lot of our time isolated. For most of human history, if people wanted to actually connect with each other or actually live a fulfilling life at all, you actually had to physically be in the presence of other people. You had to live in community. And now we just like being inside our homes and watching our screens. Hmm. And even if there are several people in the house, we're increasingly isolated. So we're living in isolated places. And now because of the pandemic and the requirements of medical things, that is really extreme right now. There's a whole great deal of isolation happening. So that's that's one extreme that we're living in. Do you see people almost have begun to like it, you think, in some ways? Prefer it. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. What's the, what, what, you what, get used to a thing and you just find yourself sitting there and then you can't understand why you don't have a balance and joy and peace in your life while you're sitting there, you know, three times in an evening telling Netflix, yes, I'm still here. Oh. <laughs> Janelle does that all the time. <laughs> so now what's the consequence though? I mean, you, you, you just touched on it, but if somebody even begins to love the isolation and think they can be fine that way, what spiritually speaking are the consequences of this? It's devastating really. Um, we won't reach out to a God that we don't think we have a need for. And when we sit in isolation long enough, uh, we develop all kinds of emotional, mental, physical, spiritual problems, first of all. But the primary one is we, we kind of sear ourselves over. We isolate ourselves to a point where we really think this becomes normal and, and we know something's wrong, but the normal triggers that tell us connect with somebody, pray, spend time in God's word. Those things that normally drive us there start going quiet. Those signals that would drive us to a place of health and healing again, start going quiet, start going numb. And we get in very, very dangerous positions when that happens. How do we pull people out of that, Pastor? Because often people lose that self-awareness to realize it's destructive to be isolated. Yeah, well, the, the, what, well, first of all, let me tell you how we try to pull ourselves out of that is uh, getting online with social media. <laughs> well, yeah, that, we call that community, huh? 
Yeah, we, <laughs> yes. that's, that's a bad move. We, and we call it community. And mm-hmm. so what we've got is we are now toggling back and forth between two unhealthy extremes. On the one side, we're isolated all by ourselves. And then on the other end, we are in a room with a megaphone where we can literally talk to millions of people at a time. Okay. We got thousands and, of friends on Facebook. We connect. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it's high, it's huge numbers, but there's no depth. And, and this has been happening for a lot of years. But now the pandemic has put that into such extremeness. I think we've probably gone 10 years in the last 10 months, we've probably gone down five to 10 years of what would normally have happened because of the isolation. So now we're not just in isolation, but we're toggling back and forth between isolation on the one hand and mass and social media on the other hand. And we think that's community and it's not. We're actually in two extremes. We're on the isolation extreme and we're on the mass and social media extreme. And healthy community is in the middle with small groups of people, much more personal. They actually know us. We actually know them. We actually hold each other to account. And that's called community. (laughs) And that's what the body of Christ was designed to do with and for and among us. And in some ways, we've had to separate ourselves from that physically and medically, but we were already on that track. (laughs) <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah. We are already doing that and toggling back and forth between isolation on one hand, mass and social media on the other hand, and ignoring community is a very unhealthy place to be. When the quarantining started and the pandemic started, I remember seeing memes of introverts saying, man, this is our time to shine. Are you just talking to extroverts? Are there people that can say, no, I'm good, actually? <laughs> well, I am an extreme introvert. I'm I'm fine with conversations like this. I'm fine speaking in front of a crowd, but I'm an extreme introvert. When I get low, don't bother me. Don't ask me to go to a party. Leave me alone on my couch. No wonder I uh, like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when this started, and my wife is an introvert as well, we both looked at each other and said, well, we can rock this. This is no problem. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> but even for us, it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an extrovert. That just talks about how you recharge when you're feeling down. We Everybody still needs connection and people and community. Now, introverts, we need to pursue it more purposefully because extroverts seek it out automatically. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but that actually is a danger for introverts because it's like the frog in the kettle. We don't know how unhealthy it is until a little further down the road because we don't have that you know, daily itch to be around people. So it's just as important. It's got nothing to do with your personality type. Mm. It has to do with how God made every single one of us. We are made to be in community with each other. We're having a conversation with Pastor Carl Vaders. He's author of four books about small churches. He has resources for helping small churches thrive at carlvaders.com. When we come back, we're going to keep talking with Pastor about these two extremes he's seeing Christians stuck in, isolation and engagement in social media. In fact, we have to dig a little more into that social media one and what Pastor is seeing on that front. Hey, it's Brian. I've got one little request. Now, I'm not good at tap dancing, So I will not tap dance around it. So here it is. We need your money. Okay, that was a little direct, but it's true. We're part of Moody Radio Cleveland, and we're a listener-supported ministry. So people like you who listen to this podcast every week faithfully, and we're grateful for you, you are the ones who keep every episode coming out time and again. And it's not cheap to keep radio stations and podcasts running. So would you prayerfully consider a donation to this ministry? Super easy to do that. Go to moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. Again, moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. And you can follow links there to get your gift in safely and securely right now. Thanks. With us live, Pastor Carl Vaders. He's got a number of resources we're going to give you in just a couple of minutes. An article to be released soon on this very issue of his observations of many people in the church spending too much time In two extremes. One is isolation and the other is engaged in mass and social media. So what are you seeing as a small church pastor going on with your congregation and others around the country on social media and church people? We... uh... Have you ever have you ever watched get, gotten on social media and seen how someone behaves, but you know them in person, yeah. and you you see their online profile and how they behave online, and you wonder is somebody else writing this for them? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Because mm-hmm. this is this is not the person I actually know face to face. I know so many people who would never ever say in person what they say online. There's this thing that happens to the screen, whether it's our phone or our laptop or whatever. It feels like a window, but it acts like a wall. And it actually causes a separation between us. And all of a sudden, we treat other people like they're fictional human beings, and they're not. Yeah. And because of that, we depersonalize them, and then they depersonalize us. And we're forgetting, no, that's an actual human being. You know how bad you feel when someone insults you online? That's how bad they feel when you do it to them. And it feels just as bad through the screen as it would if you were physically in the room with each other. So we have to have, we have to step back for a second and ask ourselves, if that person was in the room with me, would I behave that way with them? And that's at least a starting point to begin to check our spirits and our attitudes and how we're talking to people and behaving. I'd also love to get your reaction to something Janelle and I have noticed too. And it's that the more people spend time in isolation and social media, the more they seem vulnerable to things that sound Jesus-y, but are really actually quite destructive. What's your take on that? Yeah, very, very much so. Again, because when you're in community with people, all of our senses are engaged. Sound, touch, smell, hearing, you know, everything is engaged. All five, all five senses. Online, typically it's just one. You're just seeing something typed in text. And maybe occasionally you're watching a video and you're hearing, but it's only one or two senses. And because of that, we're not receiving all the full feedback that we do when we're in person with somebody. So when we're well, when we are with everybody, there are subtleties of feeling and of emotion that they're subconscious. We don't even recognize we're, we're doing it half the time, but it moderates our behavior and it gives us a sense of sympathy and empathy for the other person and they for us. So that the in-person relationship ought to be what we focus on and it ought to anchor us emotionally and spiritually. And then we carry that emotional and spiritual anchor when we do go online. I'm not anti-social media. I, I use it all the time and I'm grateful for it. But the behavioral change that we shift to on that is increasingly dangerous. The two extremes that you're mentioning today, isolation and engaging in social media, is there a relationship between the two in terms of the time you spend on social media and the isolation that you feel? Wow. Well, here's what's happening. I I think each fuels the other. The the fact right now, for instance, that we're physically isolated and alone and we can't do the things we normally would do is driving us to social media to connect. Mm -hmm. And then the more we connect on social media, the more we isolate ourselves. So you now have people physically in the house together who are not engaging with each other but are staring at their screens. Uh, my wife and I actually watched a few months ago as a couple that we knew were in separate rooms in their own house having a marriage fight on their Facebook pages. <laughs> what? I'm sorry to laugh, but it's, oh, it's ridiculous. Man. We actually saw it in real life, and I had to DM the guy. Dude, do you understand? Everybody's watching this. There's, and he's like, I don't care. She's such a whatever. And she, he went off on me. And, and we just sat in, in horror, amazement, and later on kind of amusement. Like, what in the world did we just see? That was yeah. crazy. They, and not, not surprisingly, they have since divorced. But we watch it happen in real time on Facebook. She's in her bedroom and he's in the living room. And they're yelling at each other on Facebook. That's the level that it's gotten to. I mean, that's an extreme, but nobody's listening to that and going, oh, that would never happen. We all know. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I've never seen it, but I believe it. So now I'm sure someone's sitting there right now and they go, yeah, I think I'm trapped in these extremes, isolation and social media. So what's your, your advice, Pastor, on, on how to get out of that? Um, for some folks, you, do, you are going to need to unplug for a while. You, you, disconnecting yourself from it and looking around at the real world around you will help. Long term, that's not good because these are tools that we need to use. But I do think seasons of unplugging are very, very helpful. And for some folks, permanent unplugging if you know you simply are not you know, emotionally capable of handling it. But for the vast majority of us who, who do use it, who need to use it, and who should use it, it's, these are valuable tools. 
we need to do whatever we can to constantly remain in actual community with actual people in the room. This was something that I saw, oh, it's been a couple of years ago now, that was so encouraging to me. I was in a restaurant, there were about 20 people, and a good dozen of them were youth, were teenagers. It was, you know, after church kind of a thing. Yeah. And we were just about to eat, food was almost to come, and one of the youth, like 17, said, okay, phones. And all of a sudden, every phone came out of every teenager's hand. They stacked them in the middle of the table like they were building a wall of bricks. Oh. And I looked at the kid next to me and go, what's going on? They said, when everybody else get a cell phone, they have to stack them in the middle, and the first person to touch their phone has to pay for everybody's meal. Oh, <laughs> oh I love that's that. That's cool. Yeah, you like people paying for your meal. I'm not touching my phone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a great idea. Right. And then so immediately I put mine on. And then the second I put it on, I went, oh, no, I wanted to take a picture of that stack. And now Aww. I can't touch it because I can't afford 20 meals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. But you they know, intentionally recognized it. And then we had this amazing conversation around a table with teenagers who intentionally abandoned their phones. Yeah. Wow. There's hope in that. And I, I love hearing it oh, yeah. again. Great conversation today with Pastor Carl Vader's who's an author, and you can find out more at carlvaders.com. Uh, and how else can folks get connected to you, Pastor? Well, g- given my name, if you can spell it right, you can find me anywhere, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of it, Carl Vaders. Awesome. Somebody texted earlier and asked if you're any relation to Darth, and I wasn't going to ask, but I'm sure you hear it all the time. So, Well, actually, we had a cat who passed away a couple years ago, but we had a cat and we named him Darth. So there was a Darth Vader's in the family. All right. (laughs) Another reason I love hanging out with you, Pastor. God bless you. Thanks for your time today. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? You got it. Bye-bye. Hey, hold up. Where are you going? You know you liked your time with us. You want more. So look down, hit that button right there, subscribe, and you'll get updated episodes, and then you can hang some more. And guess what? You can help us. How? A five-star rating. You can also hang with us live Weekday 6 to 9 a.m., interact with us, talk with us, download the Moody Radio app. Or at brianandjanelle.org. And we don't put all this together all by ourselves. There's some great people behind all this production. We want to thank Ron Eastwood, Kelly Ryder, Paul Carter, Mike Reynolds, and our awesome and fearless leader, Josue Villa. And finally, this podcast is a production of Moody Radio in Cleveland, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute. Well,